Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So we're still going through comparators. I'm having a lot of fun with this and I'm learning a bunch, so I hope you guys are too. So in the first video we covered comparators in a basic level, just what they are, and sticking two voltages into each of the inputs, comparing them and then outputting an internal on the LED, right? Very simple. In the next video, we added, made it a bit more complicated, looked a bit more prettier, I suppose. We added in a voltage divider network, so that way we created a reference voltage separate from our supply voltage and then we use that to compare between an input voltage here which is my 7.5 volt battery and then we had a voltage divider where we was creating five volts using a voltage divider network and then comparing my battery 7.5 volts to that five volts and then outputting when this was higher turning on the led now in this video getting it even a bit more prettier by using one of these i suppose you can see it here one of these beautiful Xenodyne, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, is this lovely looking orange black thing. Xenodyne. So, here's the schematic for it. I like it. We're getting, things are getting a bit more complicated and um, it's nice, man. So, the basics of it is quite simple, really. Basically, the Xenodyne is not going to conduct, conduct current until the voltage is reached, right? And so... Then we're using the Xenodyne, whatever value Xenodyne I put here, 5 volts, 12 volts, that's the reference voltage that we're just automatically creating. It's actually way easier than a voltage divider network. And also it's uh, independent of the supply voltage as well, but don't worry about that. So we're just, all we're doing is replacing the two uh, resistors that we had here, which we were using as the voltage divider. And we're just having that same R1, but this time sticking the Xenodyne there. Uh, and then we get automatically a five volt reference or whatever voltage we use for the Xenodiode. And then we're comparing the two. So to go through it on here, VCC is here, 12 volts. My input voltage here, 7.5 volts. What the comparator is doing is it's comparing my 7.5 volts. Is this input voltage higher than, not my 12 volt supply, higher than the five volts that we've, we're getting here at this point between, you can see here, I've got a resistor 10K coming from the, the supply rail, going here, so you got the, the, the voltage drop across the resistor to this five volt Zena. So here, from here to ground, we've got a five volt drop. Therefore, we've got a five volts reference point here. And then, so this is going into my IC and we're comparing. So once my input voltage is above that five volts, it turns on. If I remove my input voltage, which is currently 7.5 volts, remove that, the LED turns on put that back in and then the LED turns back on. So if I supply 3.3 .3 volts into here, then this LED is not gonna turn on. If I change this this um, diode here and I make it, uh, for example, I've got nine volt diodes, xenodiodes. If I chuck in a nine volt xenodiode, this, will, this, won't actually, this LED won't actually turn on. So let's do it, we'll do it here live. 7.5 volts for my battery, right? Take my xenodiode. And voila, you can see there that now my reference voltage is now 9 volts and this is, the LED is not going to turn on because this is only 7.5 volts. If I actually now was to do something even more dodgy, let's say if I remove this and, I mean it's not dodgy, I don't know why I call it dodgy, <laughs> but connect it to VCC which is 12 volts, right? Then connect that into here, my LED turns on. This is amazing, like I'm actually amazed that I understand this complex looking circuit. So let's go through it in terms of the actual uh, schematic of it. All right, so you can see here, I've got 12 volt supply. Now this network here, if you just take this circuit like this, right? You can see I've got a 10K resistor and a five, five volt diode. Whatever value this resistor is, it has to drop seven volts across it because I've got to get 12 volts. I've got 12 volts from this point here to here, right? 12 volts across this whole network here. Okay, so I've, I'm going to have a 7 volt drop across here and then 5 volts across there. It's always going to be 5 volts across here. So if I just take 12, take away 5, that means there's going to be 7 volt drop there. If I do the same up here, you can see, again, 20 volts now supply, 5 volts, minus 5 volts is 15. So you're going to have a 15 volt drop there and you can see the 15 volts drop. 5 volts, 5 volts, and you can see I get pretty much almost a 0 volt drop. A 146 millivolt drop across that um, resistor and so you can see all, all three times the LED remains on because it's just comparing is my 7.5 volts input is that higher 
than this reference voltage and this reference voltage stays exactly the same regardless of the input supply voltage and that was not the case with the voltage divider network as I'll show you with the voltage divider network here if I change this VCC which I haven't done here it's all 12 volts but if I change this VCC voltage from 12 volts it messes up the output voltage that you're going to get here because these resistors are calculated on the basis that this voltage supply will stay the same and so that's where using the Zenodide makes a lot more sense it's actually amazing really to be honest with you and so if you look here as I change the voltage of the Zenodide you can see here so I've got just a 12 volt supply 10k resistor and 1 volt Zenodide so what that means is that we're going to have a 1 volt drop across the Zenodide regardless so 12 minus 1 gives me 11 volts drop across here if I then increase this Zenodiode to 9 volts or 5 volts, you can see I end up getting a 7 volt drop across that resistor because obviously I've got 5 volts there and same there, 9 volts ends up being a 3 volt drop. And so I can change, I can easily set a reference voltage just based upon the Zenodiode very, very easily, which is nice, man. It's a very, very good circuit. The other thing I'll do is I'll just briefly explain how the Zenodiode works just in case there's somebody that doesn't understand it. If we take a 6 volt Zenodiode, okay, I don't even know where I got this from on Google, so apologies for not linking the website, but you got a 6 volt Zenodiode, okay? If that voltage is not at 6 volts, so let's say for example I've got 6 volt Zenodiode and my VCC here, which you can see is 12 volts, if that was actually, let's say, um, we'll put over here, if this was 4 volts, okay, then what that means is that the Zenodiode is not going to conduct any current. And so you're going to have an open circuit just like this. Okay. And so when that Zenodiode reaches the breakdown voltage, so which is 6 volts, then it becomes a short and you get the straight line through. This probably isn't the best diagram. I don't even know how I printed it. Let me just use, I'll just use this schematic. I don't really want to, it's actually, it just looks so nice. I don't really want to draw on it, but it doesn't matter. I'll do it. Do it for you guys. Okay, so when this 5 volts here, 5 volts supply, this was let's say 4 volts, okay? Then this 5 volts Zenodiode would, is not going to allow current this way. It's not. What's going to happen is you're going to have an open circuit basically. So there's this, this, this chain is not complete and so you're not going to get any voltage drop across this Zenodiode. And what that means is that you're actually just not like... This circuit is not going to turn on basically until you get 5 volts here. So if it's at 4 volts, this LED is going to be off. If the VCC was at 4 volts. And I actually should have done it in the simulation, so apologies. I mean, hopefully that makes sense. Once it reaches 5 volts, then you get like basically a short. It's as if the Zenodiode's not there. Um, obviously it is still there. But it allows current to flow through. And then so because it allows current to flow through, yeah, the circuit works. <laughs> I've done a terrible job explaining that. Go watch the Zenodiode video. I mean, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. The comparative side of things should make sense as well. Um, I think from here, uh, you can basically make like a voltage, a linear voltage regulator just from this circuit. So I'm going to go and do that now. And I think that will be my next video. I could delve deeper into comparators, but personally, I don't think I need to. You know, you can do like the comparator circuits that have like looping feedback and whatnot. I may get into that. We'll see. I'm not sure what the next video is going to be. But if you like these videos, leave a like. And yeah, I mean, if you want to, you know, see the next one, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.